been messing around with this motor for a little while and looked like there I found this distributor cap I found the wires so I got the uh, cap put back together the wires put on and it looks like it has electronic ignition so there's no points that's a good thing so some encouraging news there still need to get a battery filters etc but the problem is I uh, yeah, I dropped the uh, the oil plug out of the bottom of the pan to drain the oil, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it on my wrench, but see that green fluid? That is the coolant, and yeah, there's the oil plug. She's pretty, pretty goopy, but yeah, I took. I took the drain plug out and I got about two gallons of coolant out of the bottom of the of the oil pan. I pulled the dipstick and it was way over full. So uh, yeah, you can see some of it spilled out on the floor. I would say so. Normally, if this was an overhead valve motor, I'd say head gasket. But I'm not sure on this thing because it's a flathead. There is no oil passages in the head. So, I don't know. If it is a head gasket, then it has to be leaking from the cylinder head into one of the cylinders and running down the actual cylinder into the pan. So I guess what I need to do is a compression test when I get the, uh, when I get the oil changed and the battery hooked up. I did run a, uh, or I did fill the, I put some water in the radiator and yeah, nothing's running out on the floor and nothing's running out into the oil drain pan so I don't think the block is cracked um, yeah so maybe it is the head gasket I guess we'll I guess we'll find out alright there's a new battery two new battery cables and um, I think we're we're almost ready to start or try to start this thing got new oil filters new oil I have filled the radiator with coolant and flushed out the oil pan as best I could with some old fuel and that seems to be fine. I got all the sludge out that I could. Um, yeah, There's the old battery cable. I don't know, uh, maybe the previous owner was a farmer. Alright, so I got the battery in, everything hooked up and uh, the motor turns over. Did a compression check. I have no compression on one, three, four, and five. And the only compression I have is on two and six. So I'm pretty sure the valves are stuck open. Um, or possibly there's just some junk underneath the valves and they won't seat. I don't know. This is what it does. So yeah, it tries to go, but you know, two cylinders aren't going to be enough to carry the whole motor. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. The, the tappet cover is underneath the exhaust manifold, which is behind the frame rail on the opposite side of the motor, uh, over here. So I don't know if I can get to that from the top side. I might be able to get it from the bottom side, but I'm going to have to jack the side of the machine up to do that. So. Anyway, I think that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. So it's the end of day three on the uh, big ugly forklift project. And yeah, I don't have a lot of good news. But it's really not, it's not the end of the world. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So first of all, I took off the side covers and the seat. And the reason I did that was so that I could take off the head. So there's the head laying on the floor, and <clears throat> that's the head gasket. And uh, yeah, there's your problem. So that's a, a pretty catastrophic failure of the head gasket between cylinders four and five. And uh, this is where the, the drive shaft for the distributor runs through the head gasket. So that's kind of a weak spot 
in the head gasket and if it was going to blow somewhere that's that's as good a place as any so uh, let's see that explains my lack of compression on 4 and 5 that also explains why I was getting coolant in the cylinders um, yeah because there's an oil passage here or sorry a coolant passage here and here so yeah it's basically able to just dump right out into those cylinders the only reason it didn't flood the engine with coolant and hydro lock is that I never got it warmed up so the thermostat never opened and uh, yeah so it was just just trickling in there or siphoning in or, or whatever uh, anyway I'm gonna clean up the top or the bottom surface of the head and put a straight edge on it see if it's see if it's flat the, the manual says that it can be up to 17 thousandths out of flat, which seems crazy to me, but uh, yeah, we'll just check it out and see see what we get. Uh, hopefully this light doesn't screw everything up. Anyway, that's the top of the motor right there, and the, the only thing that I really found is what I already knew, which is... Um, I think I had a stuck valve here, here, and here, and then number four had no compression just because of the bad head gasket. So this is the business side of the uh, of the Continental, and I've removed the intake and exhaust manifolds, and then I removed the tappet cover. So. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty gruesome in there, but I really don't think it's that bad. Uh, I'm gonna pop the pop the uh, valve springs off, pull the valves out, and clean them up. Hopefully, I can just grind them. If not, I'll have to buy new valves, and then uh, we'll grind the seats. Uh, the manual says that this machine has, or this motor has, hardened valve seats on the exhaust valves. I don't know about the intake side. So hopefully the, those valve seats are okay. I really don't want to machine those out and put new ones in. That's a big job. And uh, yeah, I don't think it would be worth it. I don't know if you can see this tag right here. But uh, this motor is wearing the Mark of the Beast. That is a reman tag. So at some point somebody put a remanufactured motor in this forklift. And maybe other people's experiences are different, but... I have had terrible, terrible luck with reman engines. They just cut every corner you can think of, and yeah, if your if your motor is blown up or you're having a problem, I, I highly suggest that you have someone that you know overhaul it or rebuild it. Do not buy a reman engine. They they just cheap cheap out everywhere. You know they don't use gaskets. They silicone everything. You know RTV everywhere. They don't put they don't put in new valves. They just grind them way past the the limits. Yeah, really bad luck. And this machine, uh, I measured the bores. It's already been bored sixty thousandths over. So, who knows? This this motor could have been overhauled four times already. Yeah, who knows? Um, I am not gonna mess with the bottom end. I had about twenty pounds of of uh, oil pressure just on the starter so I think that we're gonna get lucky there and uh, this top end of this motor looks looks terrible but it really isn't that bad the diameter of the bores measured out within one thousandth and uh, according to the manual it's allowed to be up to eight thousandths out so I think we're okay there I don't think any of the rings are are frozen in the pistons these are aluminum pistons so all I'm going to do is clean the hell out of it, regrind the valves, possibly replace the valves if they're really bad. Um, yeah, check the valve springs. And then new head gasket, new intake and exhaust manifold gaskets, probably new studs. These ones are pretty nasty. New tappet cover gasket, and yeah, put her back together. See if we can make it work. So that's it for now.